I don't know if anybody in here would ask that question at this stage. What would you feed your animals? And what is the great thing about ruminants in terms of nutrition? Forage. Yes, they are ruminants, they eat grass. We don't have to worry about going to the farm store and see if we get a bag of feed and if the America decided not sending any soya bean come here and all these sort of things. No. So that is one of the great things about rearing small ruminants. The feed is out there. You can plant it, right? So you don't have to worry so much about commercial grains, right? And we spoke about um, goats being grazed, I mean, browsers, right? And that is important to know because remember, you know, why you're learning about these things about the animal and the behavior is because you want to keep the animal happy. Once the animal is happy, it's relaxed, it's just eating, gaining weight, growing happy, you know? And then at the end of the day, you will be happy. Right? So that is why we learn these things about the animals. We don't want to make the animal unhappy. If he's unhappy, guess what he's not going to do? Peace. Exactly. He's not going to eat, probably not drinking water. And if he doesn't do all these things, we know all the problems that we can have when we have improper nutrition. So we're always trying to keep our animals happy. So if the goat same want to browse, God knows we're going to let him browse. Right? We're going to elevate the hay tree, the hay rack, so that he can pull at it and feel like he's browsing. Right? Or if we're going to let him out, we have little trees that we plant that he can browse from, right? So we understand the animal behavior so that we can keep the animals happy so that we can be happy. Of course, we also have to look at different factors that affect feed intake. And we emphasize feed because it's all about nutrition, right? So we say that sometimes there are feed factors, the taste. Because some of us don't think that the animals should say, no, it not taste good. <laughs> Who is the goat to say that it don't taste good? But yes, sometimes it's just not palatable to them. They don't like it, and they're not going to eat it, right? And you have ever seen persons who said they mix feed and they put little grain inside the layer of corn and all this other stuff, and they talk about the animal just selecting out yeah. what the animal wants. Yes, because the animal is selecting what is tasty. And if they have the opportunity to do that, that is what they will do, right? So you have to pay attention to the animal and how it's feeding, right? And what it's selecting. Smell is also an issue. So if the feed is smelling moldy or anything like that, the animal is not going to force itself to consume it. The variety, moisture content, digestibility, right? And the size and the form of the feed. Because if the, if the grains are too small, we know that, yes, even if the animal is forced to eat it, it can cause what with the animals. So we have grains and it's very fine and the animal is eating it. I remember we are feeding what? No, we're not feeding animals. Remember what we said we're feeding? The microbes in the stomach. Exactly. The other thing too is that when the grains are so small sometimes, the animal digests it. The microbes in the stomach digest it very quickly. And then when you digest it very quickly, you start changing the pH of the stomach or you can start getting blood. The animal can release the gas because so much is built up and everything, right? So these are some of the things that we have to look at, and that is why you have to understand, especially the animal stomach. If you want to really understand an animal, learn about the stomach and how it functions and what is really happening. And then you feed the stomach, and the animal should be good. If the grain is too fine, it will cause respiratory problems. Exactly. If the feed is too fine, it, uh, dusty and all this sort of stuff, it can affect the, the animal as well too, right? So you see how feed alone, just even not, you just think that you don't have to worry about feed. Feed is just feed. But how you have to pay attention even to that, because even that can let the, let the animal be in discomfort. To some extent, sometimes why there are variations too, it's because of the type of forage that a farmer may, found, may find on his property. So for example, I may say on my property, I really have king grass, but you have guinea grass growing on your property. And so your feed formulation may have to be a bit different because of what the breakdown of the, the forage may be. And sometimes too, the quality. So you, we may have the same type of grass, but guess what? I may be adding fertilizer to my pasture or to my fodder bank. You're not adding fertilizer. So even though we're still using the same amount of feed and everything and feeding the animals, you're wondering why mine is not looking as healthy as yours. It's because the quality of the grass that you have is better than the other farmer. Right? So, no, we're just saying when you're doing pelletizing, there's always a, a particular size that the pellets should be. You don't want it too large and too hard, 
right? Because you don't want to destroy the animal teeth as well, too, right? So all we're saying is that there are guidelines. So know these guidelines when you're looking at feeding your animal with pellets. The factory does that for us already, which is why sometimes we say we just buy the bag feed and we're not pelletizing our own feed because they have worked out the science of all of that already and know how to get all the nutrient packed in each of these little pellets that they produce. So that is why we sometimes depend on the commercial grain to give a little boost to our animals, right? But sometimes too, that dusty feed that we see is farmers trying to trick the system. Sometimes probably I'll give you a little pig feed around there which is more probably finer and stuff and trying to stretch feed and trying to mix it and dilute and experimenting with their animals, all right? So pay attention to that as well too because remember what we said, these different feed formulations have different kind of nutrients in them that animals may be sensitive towards, yeah. right? So we have to be at, pay attention to that and not just feel that you're, you're skilled and you're tricking the animal or tricking the system. So we love to do that, you know. The skill where that is concerned, right? But it may backfire on us, right? The appetite of the animal, the preference size. Remember we spoke about different stages of growth, if it's in pregnancy or if it's a growing stage or the lactation stage, different quantity of feed and all these different sort of things that we will look at, right? But like I said, these are things that you're going to learn in detail later. So I'm just kind of browsing through. The feeding time. Remember we try to say be consistent in the time that you give the animal because you don't want to upset it, it's just like when you get used to a particular lunch time, right? And you say by 12 o'clock, you hear your stomach start preparing, <laughs> right? You hear, the, you can hear the acid start producing and if not, is it, nothing is in the stomach, what it start do? The acid start digesting the walls of the stomach because something will have to be digested and if it's not food, it's you, <laughs> right? So you want to keep it consistent because when you throw that off, then you start feeling, you're not feeling so well. You'll probably start saying you get headache. So it's the same thing with the animals. When the microbes are looking forward to say, yes, this is my feed time, and I'm going to get feed, they're rearing and ready to go to start digesting something, and when they look, nothing. And probably when they are probably all decide that, no, they're not going to digest anything, they see feed rushing down, right? So you have to pay attention to all of that. Another thing with feeding time, too, is that, remember, we speak about climate change, and we must pay attention to that. And there are persons who are saying that, you know what? Animals are going to eat when it's, the time is cooler. So even though you're tired the goat out there, in the midday sun, the goat is more thirsty than anything. He's not interested in eating anything. So you want to make sure that when you're feeding your animals, you're saying probably early morning or even late evening, is sometimes the best time to feed the animals. That's when the animal is more comfortable to eat. During the other hotter times of the day, it's just concentrating on consuming water, right? Frequency, the quantity offered. That's another thing we always speak about, that you have to pay attention to how much your animal will be consuming. Competition from other goats, that is when you have them housed together, you have to make sure that you have enough feed containers or you design your house in such a way that you don't have a bully system, right? And the temperature, oh, we spoke about that shade, providing shade for your animals, as a matter of fact, we are hearing a lot now about the silver pastoral system in the, in the, in the Tropics, we used to think about just pastures. We like to see endless lands, flat lands with grass and animals out there grazing. But with the temperature that is coming out, they're actually saying, no, you need to have trees mm -hmm. on the pasture to provide shade. And they tell you how the shade even improve the quality of the grass on the pasture and all these different sort of things, right? So sometimes we have to be changing our management system because we have to be flexible, you know. If the climate is changing, we have to learn to change along with it. Or you're going to stay behind and, 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 and die out, right? So we have to have that flexibility within us. Yeah, competition right? with other goats? Like yes, competition with other goats. Right. Mm -hmm. Space. Pardon me? Oh, oh. oh, you're talking about the competition from other goats? Just like with, with humans, when we go and rush for lunch now, who run fastest, reach over there first, and start take up most of the food and all this. <laughs> Exactly. So just imagine, like you say, you have your goats, and you know the goats are at a particular age now where they're feeding, but you have the mothers, the does, the older ones that are there, and these little ones trying to squeeze in to try and get access to the feed. No, the bigger ones are going to push them aside, right? They must wait their turn, but by the time their turn comes, the feed probably finish because the other ones are eating more than they should have been eating. Not that you never put enough feed, you know. They're just eating more than they should have been eating, so the others don't have anything left to get, right? So have another spin on that, where you have some, some 
animals that they're picky when they're eating. When you have that, you put them with other animals and they tend to feed better. And so remember, as farmers, you are the best ones to understand what is happening with your animals. You have to watch your animals. You have to observe your animals, right? And you will see when that is happening because you might notice in the pen, you just have one that is just constantly pushing everybody away. I want to hug the feed. I probably hug where you have the water section and stuff. Exactly. So you may say, you know, you have to go separate that one and feed that one separately. A little yeah. competition sometimes stimulates them to go and eat. When they just buy themselves because they're exactly. they, 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 they tend to be lazy about the feeding. And if they know they have a little competition in the pen, they tend to feed. So try to run. Better. Try to run ahead of time. Because you figure, you start the animal smart, you know. They figure if they wait too long, they might not get anything. So the first thing they start to do is just run and can't eat as much as they can eat because they don't want to wait around because they've had that experience, right? Waiting around and got nothing. So that is what we're speaking about. So that's why it's good to observe your animals.